Hi students, this is a video to go along with our week two of distance English class for the summer of 2020. This reading is for the morning English class. If you have your packet, follow along while I am reading, circle or mark any new vocabulary for you. If you are not part of my distance English class, no problem. Follow along with your notebook, write down any vocabulary that's new for you, put the vocabulary into sentences in comments under the video, and I can give you some feedback about your sentence. Vocabulary that's hard for pronunciation, use your mobile device, take a video of yourself speaking the word, listen to my pronunciation, and make a small analysis between them. So let's jump into our story. This story is titled, With 250 babies born each minute, how many people can the earth sustain? It was written by Lucy Lamble for The Guardian newspaper, published on May 8, 2018. How many people are there in the world? We don't know for sure since all figures are estimates. United Nations UN data suggests there were about a billion people in 1800, 2 billion in 1927, and 5 billion in 1987. There are just over 7.5 billion people in the world today. There are on average about 250 babies born every minute more than 130 million in a year. It is projected that there will be 11 billion people by the year 2100, 2100. Where is the population rising fastest and slowest? Broadly speaking, the fastest population increases are taking place in Africa and Asia. These continents will have 15 of the 20 most populous nations by 2050. By that year, there will be more Nigerians than Americans. By 2100, it is projected that as many as one-third of all people, almost four billion, will be African. At the other end of the scale, population growth has stalled in parts of Western Europe, Japan, and Russia. In some areas, it has even begun to decline. Sustainable? This is a difficult question to answer. Experts like Paul Ehrlich argue that the population of the world has long since surpassed optimal levels. However, critics argue that consumption, the use of resources, is as important as population levels. Some believe the very argument about overpopulation is problematic. That's because it tends to point the finger at poorer parts of the world with higher growth rates. The argument ignores the fact that richer regions use disproportionately more resources. What influences fertility? The fertility rate is the number of children born for every woman of childbearing age in a population. The things that tend to affect it include female empowerment and access to education and health care. The global average fertility rate is just below 2.5 children per woman today. Over the last 50 years, the global fertility rate has halved. In the past, fertility rates of 4.5 to 7 children per woman were common. High mortality rates of young people kept population growth low. As healthcare and medicine improved, the population growth rate began to soar. It only flattened out as the fertility rate declined toward two children per woman. If birth rates have fallen so far, why is the population still rising fast? Of course, fertility rates are just half the story. People are living longer, far longer in some parts of the world. About 55 million people die every year, which is less than half the number who are born. The number of children who die before reaching their fifth birthday has fallen to an all-time low. At the same time, life expectancy is higher than 80, 
in 30 countries. It is higher than 70 in more than 100 countries. So what is the demographic dividend? Countries that do succeed in reducing fertility rates can benefit from something called a demographic dividend. This is where there are more people working in a country than children to support. Where you have a rapid decline in fertility, the younger population is no longer growing as fast. The number of workers per child increases, which should lead to a period of rapid economic growth. This was what happened in South Korea and Taiwan in the 1970s. Now countries like China and India are benefiting from a demographic dividend. Falling child mortality, but continuing high fertility, can lead to a youth bulge, a high population of young people. In Africa, this has led to significant youth unemployment. Isn't it problematic that Western populations are declining? Another global demographic shift is aging populations in developed and advanced developing countries. In these areas, the population over age 60 will triple by the year 2050. This year, the number of people worldwide who are over 60 will rise above 1 billion for the first time. By 2050, it is forecast to be 2 billion, which raises the question, who will pay for their needs as they get older and retire? Falling birth rates can mean fewer young people. As a result, there are not as many workers to cover the social support costs associated with aging. But aging populations can be a cause for celebration. It means development and economic growth has taken place. If countries plan for the shift, they can see gains. In Japan, for example, the introduction of universal health care meant more treatment for high blood pressure. Older people had fewer health problems, extending worker productivity. What next? Family planning groups provide services to help women control their fertility. To appeal to both liberal and conservatives, they are learning new ways to promote themselves. One is to show that family planning is not just a public health concern, but also a way to create economic development. Where women have control over their own fertility, there are gains to be had for everyone. What new vocabulary did you learn in this story? Put those vocabulary words into sentences, post them in the comments underneath of this video, and I will be happy to give you some feedback on your sentence. Until next time, students. Bye.